Here are the new 2024 Ford Mustangs. We got the Coyote V8, which is the GT. This is premium coupe. The EcoBoost 2.3 liter convertible. Which one is going to be the best blend for you? The performance variant or the most performance four cylinder out? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. The front of the vehicles, you will notice a difference with the grill design. We have the bronze appearance edition, which will make that pony in the bronze, sequential LED turn signals on both with signature daytime runnings and LED headlights. The lower will also be more aggressive on the Coyote V8 or the GT because of the way the lower bumper comes out. Both of them will have more of the grille pattern than functionality. Coming up onto the hood, the GT will get the functional scoop, which it needs this because it has over 480 horsepower. And when I'm saying it has more than that, this has the active exhaust, which will increase your horsepower by six and your torque by three. It's not gonna be the dark horse at 500 horsepower and 100 horsepower per liter for the 5.0, but underneath this is 486 horsepower and 418 pound-feet of torque paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission, which the Mach 1, you're getting more horsepower out of this. Going to the EcoBoost, this is a 2.3 liter, EcoBoost four-cylinder turbocharge with 315 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque, also paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission. The nice thing with this is you're also gaining horsepower too, and it's the fastest variant for a four-cylinder Mustang that's ever been created. You're getting the fourth-gen Coyote V8, and what that's going to bring for the Coyote V8, giving it over a $55,000 price point, that bronze appearance package. You're getting these upgraded wheels, they're 19 inch, they are bronze painted, and it includes the Brembo brake setup with the 5.0 in the bronze. On the EcoBoost, this is more of a base trim, so you're getting the standard 18 inch wheel, and they're wrapped with 235.50, but both of them, you can have a high performance or a PP performance pack, which when you put it on the Coyote, it's going to unlock. 19 by nine in the front and 19 by nine and a half in the rear. The Brembo brakes, a hand operated parking brake that will unlock your drift brake, heavy duty front springs and a K brace. The Torsum differential with 3.75 for the manual and the Torsum that we have here at the 3.55. Unique chassis tuning, unique stability control, and an upsized rear sway bar. Whereas when you put it on the EcoBoost, it unlocks. 3.55 Torsum Limited Rear Slip Differential 19 by 9 that will be wrapped with 255.40 all around and Brembo brakes. Electric hand operated parking brake which will enable the drift mode. Heavy duty front springs and giving it a unique chassis tuning. And then your obvious zero to 60 and quarter mile will be faster with the Coyote V8. The rear will both get the sequential LED tail lights and the lower is gonna be a little bit more aggressive when it goes to the Coyote V8. Quad exhaust tips, whereas on the EcoBoost, you're getting dual exhaust tips. Both of them get rear parking sensors and a rear camera. When you're going to the Coyote, you're going to get the trunk lid spoiler, Going to the convertible, a little bit more understated. Each of them, you're going to have to option a few different packages in order to make the vehicle as unique or performance driven for your daily and your track blend. And another reason why you want the active exhaust note is so when you go to your cars and coffee, or if you're trying to upset some neighbors or anything to just show off your exhaust because you have a Coyote V8, just simply lock the door, double tap on, the auto start. Now you're going to hit lock and unlock and you'll see the lights flicker. Now that you heard that little bit of an exhaust, now watch what it does. It's a pretty nifty little feature that's offered for the new Mustang. Cargo, you're gonna lose 2.1 cubic feet. It's gonna be 11.4 cubic feet of storage. The same opening as a non-convertible. 
and we do not have a spare tire tucked underneath. You'll have to pay extra for that. We need to go inside, start up this EcoBoost so you can hear that exhaust now. And a leg room. Turn down this climate control, it's just extremely noisy here. Seat adjustment for the driver, two way manual adjustment also with the space gray cloth and vinyl, four way manual adjustment for the passenger. Mustang has always had plenty of space for the front. It's really the back seat that becomes an issue. Bauer and Wilkins upgraded sound system or B&O, 12 speakers, Mustang badging in front of the passenger with the gloss black elements and you get the pattern design. The dash is going to keep it flat. The retro design changes a little bit. Premium, you're going to have this one glass curved screen, two screen layout which has a 13.2 inch infotainment screen. You have the quick wedges over here on the side. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Sync 4, put it into reverse. And we got a reverse camera with full trajectory with reverse parking sensors. You can zoom in to line up for a tow. I don't know what you would tow with the Mustang. Going on to the driver's side is a 12.4 digital reader that can go through an array of information for the driver. To change the layout to get it to like this, you have to go into this little pony right here. So you click the Mustang batch. When you click onto there, go to cluster theme and you have all these different designs. So you can change the driving mode and the whole layout of the gauge cluster, but you have to do it through the center infotainment screen, which kind of a con because you're not able to do it on the steering wheel itself. But I like that they give us the Fox body 87 through 93. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but I like that they get that retro styling for the Mustang. Going into a wireless charging pad, USB and a 12 volt, the key fob for the new Mustang. 10 speed automatic transmission is an upgrade. It's gonna be over $1,000. You get the contrast stitching and it's going to be just a huge arm rest. It's gonna be soft back here, a little bit harder up here, open up and you got another 12 volt, an area that you could put some pins and a fun fact, they even label it to tell you it needs to be pins. Leather wrap steering wheel, three spoke multi-function with the paddle shifts and the door panels configure into the dashboard. You're going to get that same design pattern that goes into the dash with the contrast stitching. It's gonna be soft to touch. I do like how they outline this with chrome, but it's not real chrome. One touch up and down, in a smaller storage pocket that you can fit a large umbrella back. And to put the top down, you still have to use this little lever here and then just simply push the button. And now there's absolutely no reason to have problems for headroom. And now trying to see how I fit with the convertible. Oh, you, the way these seats contour, they really go inward. So it's not necessarily the most desirable. Your legs are going to be sitting up in the air. As for headroom, it's a little bit better than the coupe. Legroom, if the seats are back, you're not gonna be able to fit back here. And there isn't anything for armrest. You just put it right up here whenever you're putting the top down. As for the rails, they're pushed back. So when the seat is back, you're not gonna be really moving anything around. A pro with the Coyote V8 opposed to the EcoBoost, is you're always going to hear that exhaust note when you have the active exhaust. You're gonna still hear it in the EcoBoost, but it's not the same. You have raw performance underneath the hood that is untapped until you just lower it, and it's ready to move. Nearly 490 horsepower gets unlocked, and considering the Mach 1 had 470 horsepower, this is going to be a little bit more of a clean sound, and yet 
you're getting more performance, better bang for your buck. You will have to spend some feet, some money on features, but that's also going to be in the prior gen. So overall, what they've done is given you a good level at the base trim, and then you option the features to make this more track derived. You see an opening? You gotta take it. Now the EcoBoost, you do increase five horsepower, but here I feel you're gonna be a little bit more happy, but then when the price escalate, it really makes it a tough choice because even the EcoBoost used to be in the $20,000 margin. Now you're in the 30,000. And when you get GT, especially if you're going premium, you're gonna be in 50, $60,000. So it opens up a lot of vehicles in which it's not gonna have the same segment feel, but dynamically speaking, it will be just as good. And the Dark Horse unlocks 500 horsepower and really you don't need much more horsepower than that, especially considering none of these vehicles are all-wheel drive or intelligent all-wheel drive. So you're not going to be able to keep the car planted all the time, but I would recommend getting the performance pack because then you could at least do some drifts because this little flappy thing for the electronic brake. Both of them are electronic. It's just the way they have the actuator with that. It has the mode which you would go into and you have to push a few buttons in order to engage it. But then it's a more fun vehicle, whether you go Coyote V8 or EcoBoost. And here's the difference in the performance. You can hear the difference. This is gonna be more quiet in tamed whereas the Coyote V8 is going to be more loud and open. If you're looking for a daily use car, I don't think as a petrol head or somebody that likes exhaust, you're going to be disappointed, but this could be a little bit more subtle, especially because it has that sleeper style too. And if you are speeding 100% Coyote V8, you're getting pulled over, but this one, they may let it go. The big problem that I have with the EcoBoost is that I just don't feel the same performance of a Mustang. I feel more like I'm in a Focus RS, in which it was okay when this vehicle was in the $20,000 price, but now you're topping or going into the $40,000 price. And I understand every vehicle has increased, it's just, I wanna feel a little bit different because it is a Mustang in which I have to go over $50,000 to feel that. And then I'm not a huge fan of the, the one panel screen. I like the two screen layout, but I would like it to be smaller because I feel like they just put big screens everywhere and I get it, it's coming out of different parts bins out of Ford or eventually it will be. But make it a little bit more unique, special for the Mustang because this is what people were going after. The materials inside could have been a little bit more premium. It is something to live with. When you get into the EcoBoost, I don't think you're going to be so much like looking at that per se, but when you go into the Coyote V8, you're gonna start thinking, why are we getting such similar materials that we get in the EcoBoost and we're getting it in the Coyote V8 or the GT? Would I choose the EcoBoost over the GT? I would go GT and I would go convertible and I would definitely add some packages because that's what's going to make that vehicle more unique especially when they start phasing out V8s which hopefully Ford says the hell with everything we're gonna keep the Coyote V8 but if I'm on a budget then I would take the EcoBoost and I would get it at the base trim because there's really no need to add a lot of features to the vehicle and I'll do some aftermarket work. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Furman Ford for giving us these two all new Ford Mustangs for our car review.